Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about The Long Walk, the second novel that Stephen King published under the Richard Bachman name. We'll be showing you what to look for when trying to identify first US and first UK editions of the book. Hey everybody, so today we are going to be looking at The Long Walk, um, which was the second Richard Bachman novel to be published. It was published first in 1979 as a mass market paperback original. Um, it's my personal favorite of the first four Bachman books. Um, really, really like this, this book. And this is what the first edition looks like. Uh, it was published by Signet in 1979. Here's a look at the spine. And it was, you know, a an inexpensively done mass market paperback. Uh, these books um, were cheaply made. They fell apart easily. So many copies are um, scuffed up and worn and creased on the spine and so forth. This is a, a fairly decent copy. Um, if you want to check to see if your copy is a first printing, on the copyright page, there is a number line that goes down to one. Uh, anything other than one, and you have a later printing. So um, that's the long walk. I, I dig the artwork uh, on this one. Pretty cool, definitely better than Rage. So that's the US first edition. Uh, it was then published in the UK. Um, as a mass market paperback original. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the book, uh, which is this. Uh, so this is the British version. Um, and it was published by New English Library, also in 1979, I'm sorry, 1980. So it came out um, a little over a year later. If you look at the copyright page, um, there's no indication of printing. Uh, so I don't really know if there were subsequent printings of this book. I have never seen a later printing um, of the British Long Walk, but then again, I haven't looked. So anyway, uh, the price on the back is one one twenty five UK. Can you see it? Um, and uh, that's what the spine looks like. That's what the front looks like. I think I like the American artwork a little bit better. This one kind of, I don't know, the the guy's got this face shield, which just makes me think of like um, some kind of medical, uh, like, um, I don't know, uh, plague, some kind of plague something. And the long walkers all look really pale and they, they kind of look like zombies. So it doesn't, I don't know if I saw this on the shelf, I would I would feel like this is some sort of zombie book and not uh, it doesn't really give a good indication of what the novel is really about. But whatever, my opinion. But anyway, um, overall, it's uh, it's my favorite of the first four Bachman books. And uh, that is The Long Walk. Big thanks, as always, to Noah for showing those amazing first edition copies. Thank you very much for your help with that. The Long Walk, like all of the original Bachman books, has a rather twisty path to ultimate publication and making it to market. So what's really fascinating about The Long Walk is it is not one of the first longer works that Stephen King began but it is definitely one of the f first of the long works that he completed. Um, I believe when he was like 15 years old, he wrote a novella called The Aftermath, and he started some other longer works, including Getting It On, which later made it to market as the infamous Rage. But he began Getting It On when he was in high school. He didn't finish it until five or six years later. But The Long Walk was begun and finished while Stephen King was a freshman in high school. And it certainly went, it underwent some revision 
um, before it finally made it to market. There are some up-to-date cultural references that put it squarely in the late 70s. Uh, I think it references John Travolta, um, people like that, that weren't around in the mid to late 60s, weren't in the popular consciousness. And I, I'm not exactly sure how much is of what we now know as the long walk is the original content and how much was revised um, and changed and updated. But the long walk um, as a thing was initially begun and completed while Stephen King was a freshman in college. So he passes it around to some of his professors to seek advice. Um, he's proud of it. He's eager to see it out in the world. Uh, he gets some advice. He submits it to a first novel competition and it is soundly rejected with just a form letter. And it's really depressing. It's a blow to King, understandably. So he puts it away and puts it in the trunk, the infamous trunk. It becomes a trunk novel. And after he's graduated college, early 70s, he pulls out the original 40 or so pages that he had done of getting it on, and he finishes getting it on, and he submits it to Doubleday, meets his future editor, Bill Thompson. It's a pass from Doubleday on getting it on, which will later become Rage. And so Stephen King tries again, goes back to the trunk, pulls out The Long Walk, and he submits that to Doubleday to the same result. Um, it's passed around by Thompson, it doesn't get a foothold in the company, and it ultimately is passed on. So back into the trunk it goes, and of course Stephen King eventually writes Carrie, that does get accepted by Doubleday, it does get published, and the rest is history. But after he had developed a bit of a success with his own name, in his own name, um, by the mid to late 70s, um, he, the idea of the Richard Bachman pseudonym is born. And the first Bachman book, Rage, comes out in paperback and I believe only had a single printing. It was just one and done. Um, and his paperback editor, um, a little while later, says, what else you got? Are we going to do this again? Is there going to be another Bachman novel? So Stephen King goes back to the trunk again, pulls out the long walk, um, polishes it up to some extent, revises it. At the very least, he updates the pop culture references to make it timely for the era, and he submits it, and the long walk becomes the second um, Richard Bachman title. It came out in 1979. And unlike Rage, I believe The Long Walk was in print for several years and actually uh, underwent multiple printings and developed a bit of a cult following, which is really interesting. And of course, it was then eventually caught up in the Bachman books Omnibus in 85, which was reprinted and re-released in 96. And then when Stephen King pulled Rage out of print, the three remaining Bachman books from the Omnibus were all released in standalone editions. And I, I don't have an early printing. Um, I wish I did. It's definitely one of my grails. It's on my list. But I have this very recent um, standalone edition of The Long Walk. So it is still in print and readily available today and in fact is about to enjoy its first ever limited edition release coming from Centipede Press and um, that should be since the end of January now the Centipede books should be mailing out and arriving to people by the end of February so about a month from now I'm stoked I'm totally gonna do a video about that you know I am unboxing showing these books talking about them um, I'm really excited about it because to me, what sets the long walk apart, particularly, particularly from the Bachman books, um, the early four, 
as well as just in general everything that was ever published under Bachman's name. What sets The Long Walk apart is that it is the only one of that group of books that I consider to be absolutely essential. Um, I read the Bachman books, all of them, um, over the last few years, and I had low expectations. And for the most part, I was pleasantly surprised, but these are like B, B movies. They're B grade um, works. They're not classics, they're not essential, but they're an interesting part of the Stephen King universe. Well, the Long Walk blew my mind. Um, I, like I said, I don't know how much of it was revised. Uh, I know that a decade of growth and development on Stephen King's part, no doubt, put him in a better place to polish up the writing. Um, but the fact that originally it was written while Stephen King was 18, 19 years old, and I couldn't help but, of course, immediately uh, see The Long Walk as an allegory for the Vietnam War, which was definitely a reality um, at the time that Stephen King was writing the novel. There's um, elements of the, the lottery by Shirley Jackson and the actual literal draft lottery um, that was happening and calling young men up, and then other ones were just willingly signing up and potentially going to their deaths because of a sense of patriotism for their country. Um, I thought the book was brilliant and works brilliantly well as an allegory for the Vietnam War. And it definitely heightened my appreciation and my experience of reading it while I was reading it. Uh, written from the first-hand perspective of a young person directly impacted by this thing that's happening, written while it was happening and while he was in the middle of it. Um, I think that that is fascinating. And I don't know if I would actually consider The Long Walk to be YA fiction, but I certainly think that it would be a great place for a young person uh, of middle to late teenage years to start with Stephen King. It's utterly unusual and different from everything else in his catalog. And it's another, it's an early example of a book that manages to be nail-biting, edge of your seat, fascinating, with a limited set of, well, it's a large cast of characters, but one group of characters basically doing one thing for the entire duration of the work. And it there are flashbacks and, and asides, and you learn about some of the characters in the novel, and there's enough that happens on the walk itself to keep things suspenseful and interesting, but it really is a just a triumph of um, setting up barriers for your story, for your writing, and I think it help keep, helps keep the work focused, helps keep it moving forward. And um, another thing I really appreciated about it while I was reading it is I could see the influence that it has had on things that have come since. I would see, I could say um, that I saw a direct line of influence from The Long Walk to The Hunger Games. Uh, for instance, the, the Hunger Games series, I don't know if it would exist if it weren't for The Long Walk. Um, so no joke, one of the earliest things that Stephen King wrote um, even if he started it, finished it, wrote it from scratch in 1979, it would still be impressive and it would still stand as a highlight of that formative decade. Um, the 70s for Stephen King, his published work, there's some titanic works of importance in that, um, in that decade. And The Long Walk, while it's relatively obscure compared to Salem's Lot and The Shining and The Stand. Um, it stands shoulder to shoulder with those works and I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, it is the 
by far, by a mile, it's the best Bachman book. And it is definitely top 20 Stephen King of all time for me, if not top 10. It is exceptional and I highly recommend that you read it. If, it. if that hasn't come across so far, I'm jazzed about this book and I think you should read it if you haven't because it's really good. But yeah, anyway, Centipede Press Special Editions coming. There'll be a video about that, at least one. Um, I'm really excited about it. But for now, thanks as always to Noah for your help in showing those amazing books. Thanks uh, to Bev Vincent, Stephen King historian extraordinaire for some of the background information. It's always fascinating to learn the process and see how these things start and then the, the twisting road they take to finally um, making it to market. And as always, thanks to you. Um, these videos are a lot of fun. Uh, the channel's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy doing this and I'm, I'm really glad if you enjoy watching it. I thank you for your support and I will talk to you next time. Bye.